Now let's come to see how the Christian life manifests towards humanity. Don't forget, I told you in the last broadcast that um, considering the manifestation of Christian life towards humanity, we're going to look at it under two subheadings towards fellow Christian first, then towards non Christians, fellow human who are not a Christian. All right, now towards fellow Christian, it will manifest in bearing their burdens. Yeah, it will manifest in bearing the burdens of other Christians. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, the Bible says, Bear one's another's body, and so fulfill the law of Christ. We we'll all have spiritual burdens, and we we'll all have physical burdens. Now, when a brother or a sister in Christ is burdensome. That is, he has or she has the burden of spiritual life for him to carry. I have a command from the word of God. If I'm going to show to my fellow that I'm a Christian, I must be ready to bear his burden with him. Yeah, sometimes if it is spiritual body, we got to pray together. If it will require that we weep together, we cry together, we have to do that. And that is when we are showing to our fellow Christians that we are indeed Christian. Especially when I caught a brother in a sinful act, I am not to judge him. Yes, when a fellow Christian is found in a misbehavior, I am not to judge him, I am not to spread it, I am not to preach about it, but I am to carry that body to identify with my fallen or erring brother or my fallen or erring sisters and bear that body and ensure that this brother or this sister is restored. That is the scripture. Then number two, by helping the needy. There are many Christians who are needy and it is not a cause to be in need. Yes, it happened to the apostles of old. In Acts chapter 11, verses 14 and verses, verse 30, verses 14 and 30, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. Now, that family, they are in need of Christ. Now, verse 30, this they also did and sent to the elders by this hand of Barnabas and Saul. Uh, it would have been good for me to read the whole from verses 14 down to 30. You know, the, the elders in Jerusalem, they were in need. Aha. Other Christians that were in other town and in other cities, they were not in the same need that these people were. So, and those who were not in need, Send the relief package to their brethren that are in need. So, I may have money today and somebody does not have. I should share from what I have with my needy brother or with my needy sister. Then number three, how to manifest to my fellow Christian that I am a Christian is by fellowshipping. We go to fellowship together. And fellowship means koinonia in Greek. And koinonia means sharing. Yeah, sharing. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42, the word of God says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. So to show to my fellow Christians that I am a Christian, I got to share with them what I have received from the Lord. I have to share with them my pains and my pleasure and my prosperity. Yes, they also should share that is in, in koinonia, we exchange. Aha, we exchange. It is not good that it is only one person that is giving. Yeah, others also must give. It is give and take. I share what I have with you. You share 
what you have with me, that is how to manifest being a Christian. And number four, to show my fellow Christian that I am a Christian, that life must be shown to them in brotherly kindness. In First Corinth, in First Peter, chapter four, verses seven to eleven. First Peter four to seven. Brotherly kindness. I have to manifest to my fellow Christians that I am a Christian by showcasing brotherly kindness. First Peter chapter four, verses seven to eleven. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things. Have perfect love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. So brotherly kindness is that I caught my brother in a sin and I cover it. That is, I don't broadcast it. I don't create a sermon around it. And I don't start a prayer ministry or a prayer group around the falling of a brother. All of those gossip that people dwell in the name of interceding is non-Christian. Now, he said, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a good minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. And finally, on the manifesting Christian life to my fellow Christian, I got to show mutual edification. Mutual edification. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. I have to manifest mutual edification. Edification, therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Charity begins at home. I got to manifest Christian life first to my fellow Christian before I will now manifest to those who are outside Christ in the world. Comforting one another, edifying one another, these are the instructions of the scriptures of how to showcase the glory of Christ that lives within me that will give others hope of a better life and a better future. Now, let's now look at how we are to showcase the Christian life to unbeliever. Number one, we have to show chastity. Yeah, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, Verse 22, chastity. The word of God says, do not lay hands on any hastily, nor share in other people's sin. Keep yourself pure. Chastity. Keep yourself pure. You don't just endorse somebody because he claims that he is born again and you begin to lay hands. No, don't partake in other people's sin. That is what to stay away. So I have to stay away from the sins of my family members, my close pa and close friends, and people that we are neighbors. Now, loving my neighbor does not mean that I should join them in their sin. Sanctity. Then number two, I got to show contentment. In Hebrews chapter 13, that's how to show to unbelievers around me that I am content with what I have. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Yes, they cannot make me to be the chairman of a landlord association and you are the one embezzling the money. No, no, no. That is covetousness. They put money in your care and you have deferred the money before the person comes to ask for his money. Say, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you are. For he himself has said, I will never leave you, none forsake you. Then number three, to the unbelievers, I must show them that I am diligent. At work, you have to be diligent. You don't say I'm a Christian and you are working as a civil servant or you are an, 
an employee to one organization and you are lazy. First, first, first Thessalonians 3, 7. Second Thessalonians 3, 7, not first Thessalonians. For you yourself know how you ought to follow us. For we were not disordered, disorderly among you. You don't need to be lazy at work. Then number four, you have to also forbearance. You have to understand people. You have to tolerate people. You have to endure with people. And number four, you have to so honesty. In Romans chapter 12, verse 17, Romans chapter 12, verse 17, the word of God says that repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And you must also be industrious. Yes, 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12, we must be industrious. We must work hard that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your own hands as we are commanded of you, that you may work properly towards those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. You don't need to be a beggar. Uh -huh. You will beg, you will be begging, you know it's a it's, it's an attitude of begging that you are begging your boss to give you money and you are a Christian working under a non-believer. Simply because you are lazy, simply because you are not content, you are not satisfied with what you have. Yes, there are many little. Little is much if you allow God to come into it. Yes, you have to love, have love towards enemies. To be Christians, we have to love our enemies. Who are our enemies? People that hate us because we are Christians. Yes. People that does not want us to preach about, about Christ. They don't want to hear anything. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you. And persecute you. Yes. And we are to live peaceably. We are to live peaceably with unbelievers. In Romans chapter 12... We are to we are to not pay evil for evil. If your people that hate you, if they need food, give them food. If they need water, give them water. And you are to show them that you are self-control. You don't just give to emotional outburst. And finally, you must be zealous at doing good works. These are what we must put together in our daily interactions, in our interpersonal relationship with unbelievers around us. And let's show to them that we are really Christians. Will you bow down your head and ask for grace? Grace, oh Lord. Grace, 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 grace. Lord, give me grace. Give me grace to show my fellow Christians and my fellow human beings that I am a Christian in my words, in my actions, in my walk around in my, in my home, in my neighborhood, at the place of work, even in the land, in the society at large. Anywhere I find myself in the world, grace, Lord, to be a good ambassador of Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Glory be to your name. May you seal this with your grace and your power. And I commend, and I commend these people into your hand, and I also commend them to the word of your grace, and to the spirit of the truth. May you continue to keep them. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We believe you have been blessed by the word of God you just heard. For further help or counsel, call these numbers 0806-615-6208 or 0703-284-4129. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Strago Media for more spiritual messages. Or visit our website at www.stragomedia.com to download those messages for free. Thank you for staying to the end of this program. Join us again, same station, same time next week. God bless you.